was about a week's worth of media coverage after this Italian Twitter user shared that dolphin video back in March of 2020. And just look at how the internet reacted. Pretty positive stuff, right? So what does this matter? To answer that question, I think we should first have a look at a map. So every year, thousands flock to this little place in Japan called Nara Park, here in the city of Nara. Amongst all the old temples and the beautiful gardens are dozens of deer wandering freely. In 2018, my friend Pat was one of those people. I suppose you could be wondering, why go all the way to Japan just to see some deer? Why not just go to a zoo or something? I think people visit this park so they can experience nature in a way where it isn't at odds with humanity for a change. People seem to love places like this. Nara Park is just one of the many places in the world where you can see animals living freely amongst or away from people. The lengths that some will go to just to experience this really says something about our relationship with the environment. Let's take another look at that original post then. I guess some things really are too good to be true, right? If we look back at history, there is another similar case of something like this going viral. The year is 1958. A logging site in Humboldt County is found vandalized by workers one day. Journalist, Andrew Gonzoli, this guy, is sent a letter from someone who says they found very large and man-like tracks at the logging site. Gonzoli, during a very slow news day, decides to humor the letter and publishes it alongside the words, maybe we have a relative of the abominable snowman of the Himalayas. The country is taken by storm. And soon, nine years later, these two come along with arguably the most famous piece of so-called evidence of the Bigfoot. The Bigfoot has attracted thousands to Humboldt County every year, much like the people who flocked to those animal islands we looked at before. Just like Bigfoot, the dolphins in Venice attracted thousands of people who poured into social media to share their intrigue and opinions. And this isn't the only story with this kind of reaction. We're living in a post-truth era where all our information comes from our self-sustained digital ecosystems. So now, more than ever, stories like these can proliferate and succeed. Of course, not all such stories are so positive, and quite often these same platforms are used to spread harmful misinformation. But the Dolphins of Venice will be a testament to this digital generation of human storytelling, digitally immortalized like hieroglyphics in stone. And perhaps stories like the Venetian Dolphins, Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster and the Chupacabra are disingenuous. But so what? Just like other amazing yet real natural occurrences, like the village for deer in Nara, these stories can bring people together, even giving people a sense of hope when they need it most. I'm not suggesting these stories aren't all harmless. But what they do uncover is the underlying truth about how we want to think about the world. Living on as stories representative of people's hopeful natures is something folk stories have done forever. The dolphins of Venice might not exist, but what they have left us is hope. And I think we need hope, now more than ever.